This is. This is. This is the next giant leap. I love this work. Just the idea that I have a, a small part in something that goes in, into space. Artemis is NASA's program to return to the moon for the first time since the Apollo program ended in 1972. It's a big milestone for the country. I think it's important for the world. Three, two, one. Boosters in ignition. Watching the, the launch live, which just, you know, kind of closes the loop and makes you feel really good about your contributions to the project. And liftoff of Artemis 1. The uncrewed mission was the first integrated test of NASA's new deep space exploration systems, including the SLS rocket and Orion crew capsule, both of which depend on Moog technology. I don't think there would be an Orion or an SLS launch without Moog. To put it in perspective, Moog has around 100 components and systems on Artemis 1 and even more on future flights. We do have hardware up and down the entire vehicle. Everything from steering to life support. You take a lot of accountability, a lot of responsibility on the parts that you're making. That responsibility during launch comes in the form of Moog thrust vector control systems. This is a servo valve. It's part of a, an assembly that controls the trajectory of the core engine. So the thrust vector control actuators and controller are basically what steers the rocket in the direction that it needs to go. Which isn't an easy feat when it comes to the most powerful rocket ever built. Position accuracy is measured in thousands of an inch. SLS travels almost 23,000 miles per hour. That's six miles every second. So you have this big rocket nozzle, one to push a huge rocket, and our actuators need to be able to steer that nozzle just so and make fine adjustments so that you're not falling out of space and you're flying to where you want to go. Um, the controller also needs to be able to process that information very, very quickly. You're trying to get to the moon, feels like a really big target, but you have a wrong correction there and you're missing your target by miles. It's a very difficult and complicated actuator to build and test, so we had to really find the best within Moog. It's a quad-redundant power valve. It has four channels, so it can run on all four or right down the one. I mean, these parts, they hold a high-quality standard. Which includes ensuring all the parts we make can withstand the 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust at liftoff. Vibration testing is you want to test like you fly. Um, so we're yeah, simulating the launch environment. So this shaker right here is a, is a 23,000 pound force shaker. So you can feel the vibe levels. So we have hardware on, on all different parts of the vehicle. So everything that, that um, is on there actually goes through this lab. I've seen these programs through design and development and qualification and now into production. So just like seeing the culmination of all that effort and dedication is really exciting. It doesn't matter what you do, where you are, what you're interested in. You point to the sky, look at the stars, look at the moon, look at the sun, and there's not a person in the world that says, that's not cool. But the energy here is palpable as we attempt to make history today. This. This. This, this is Artemis.